Are you waking up exhausted or crashing in the afternoon, but at night when it's time to sleep, your mind just won't switch off? Well, it's not just stress, it's a disruption to your cortisol rhythm. And sometimes we can unknowingly be making it worse. Today, I'm gonna to break down 10 common cortisol mistakes that keep you simultaneously tired during the day and wired at night, and what you can do instead to finally get your sleep and mood back into sync. But first, what is cortisol? It's your main get up and go hormone, and it's made by the adrenal glands, and it helps to mobilize glucose, sharpen focus, and even balance inflammation levels. And it just needs to be in the right amount. You don't want too much or too little, and you just need to that perfect balance for steady energy, clear thinking, and a stable mood. When cortisol runs too high, you feel that wired, edgy, anxiety feeling. You have trouble falling asleep, you can get afternoon blood sugar crashes, sugar cravings, and it leads to an increase in insulin, which can lead to more fat storage around the waist. It can raise blood pressure and suppress your immune system. When cortisol runs too low, it can leave you that morning groggy feeling that you can't shake, brain fog, lack of motivation, body aches. Sometimes you're craving salt or other stimulants like caffeine just to keep going. You can be prone to more chronic inflammation, frequent infections. And so the ideal rhythm is like starting low in the morning, rising up, with, and this is known as the cortisol awakening response. And after about an hour, it should be a nice steady decline as the day goes on. And the lowest point is around midnight so that you can get a nice deep sleep. So why does this rhythm matter so much? Your brain, immune system, thyroid, blood sugar regulation, all set their clocks by cortisol. A curve that is too high or too low, or if you're flatlined throughout the day, it's gonna affect all those other hormone symptoms. And this can lead to more issues with sex hormones, thyroid hormones, insulin issues. So let's look at how we can fix this. Most people are making at least one of these cortisol mistakes. And I'll show you in the next six minutes, all 10 of these mistakes and how to fix them. Mistake number one is doing a single blood test in the morning. This doesn't give the cortisol rhythm and it's just one snapshot throughout in the day. And you can't see if someone is high or low in cortisol from this single test. The fix is to do a four point saliva cortisol test or ideally a Dutch hormone test or the vibrant wellness hormone Zuma. Both of these tests will measure the cortisol rhythm throughout the day. So mistake number two is ignoring total cortisol and just measuring the free cortisol. And while it's essential to be doing a four point cortisol test, you also want to test total cortisol levels because this will show whether you're making lots of cortisol and just have low free cortisol or whether you're just not making any cortisol. So the fix for this is to test both your free and total cortisol with the Dutch or the vibrant wellness hormone Zuma. And this is why just doing a saliva test is not optimal. Mistake number three is doing high intensity interval training at night. This leads to a spike in cortisol that can last for hours and affecting the quality of your sleep and then lead to a flattened cortisol rhythm the next day. And the fix for this is just to do this in the morning or the afternoon. Hit exercise is fantastic. High intensity can really be beneficial. But you wanna do yoga, mobility, or maybe zone two training at nighttime. Mistake number four is using caffeine as a crutch. Caffeine blocks adenosine. This gives you a false sense of alertness and it can lead to a bigger drop in cortisol in the afternoon. Plus it has a long half-life. So if you have coffee in, later in the day, it can still be affecting your sleep later that night. And this is true if you're a slow metabolizer of caffeine. So if you have the CYP1A2 gene, you may be slowly metabolizing caffeine and it's affecting you more than other people. The fix is, is cut your coffee down to one or two cups in the morning and try and get them out of the way by 10 a.m. I love my coffee, so I appreciate having that morning coffee. Mistake number five is taking licorice if you have high cortisol. Glycerin from licorice blocks 11 beta HSD2. And this raises your active cortisol levels, which is great if you have low cortisol. But many supplements contain licorice, especially adrenal supplements. And if you have high cortisol, this is gonna make things worse and sleep difficult increase your anxiety levels. So the fix is use only licorice if you have low free and total cortisol on your Dutch or hormone Zuma. Mistake number six is taking supplements 
over lifestyle choices. So if you just focus on supplements and don't fix your sleep, don't address the cause of your stress, you're not gonna get results. Adaptogens may lower cortisol by maybe 10 or 20%, which can be helpful. But if you're looking at screens late at night, running around, highly stressed, not doing things like meditation, breathing exercises to bring down your stress levels, you're not gonna get the, the result you want. So the fix for this is basically focusing on seven to eight hours of sleep, having a regular sleep and wake routine, doing breath work, and not just focusing on pills. Mistake number seven is taking ashwagandha at the wrong time. Ashwagandha, especially the KSM 66 form, which is the best research for lowering cortisol. This can be fantastic at night if you have high cortisol to help bring that down so you can sleep. But if you're taking it in the morning, this could lead to fogginess, fatigue during the day, which you don't want. So the fix for this is just keeping to 300 to 600 milligrams of ashwagandha at nighttime to help sleep. And if you want to that adrenal boost in the morning, Maybe use licorice, rhodiola, one of these other adaptogens. Mistake number eight is doing an ultra low carb diet when you're under a lot of stress or doing a lot of exercise. This can empty glycogen, making your liver raise cortisol just to keep your blood sugar steady. A low carb diet can be fantastic for many reasons, but if you go too low carb or fast too often when you're under a lot of stress, this can affect adrenal function, raising cortisol levels, making sleep difficult. So if you add in 30 to 50 grams at night, this is still not a lot of carbs, but it's enough to help sleep, bring down cortisol levels at night so you can get a good night's rest. Mistake number nine is stopping exercise or not doing any exercise when you're feeling burned out. This may be what you feel like doing. And while you don't wanna do endurance exercise, high intensity interval training, exercise is really important for the adrenals when you have very low cortisol. So the fix for this is doing things like a 20 minute, 30 minute walk every day, doing yoga, doing low intensity exercises. Mistake number 10 is not retesting or not testing more than just cortisol. So cortisol can adapt to new stresses. So as you make these positive changes, you may not have to keep doing them for a long time. Also, other things like thyroid, insulin can all have similar negative effects like cortisol. So if you don't do a full thyroid hormone test, you may be treating just the wrong thing. The fix for this is test and don't guess. So I'll include links below in the description for all the recommended tests to check your adrenal function, thyroid function, and other hormones. And if you have any questions or if you've had a tip that's really helped you in the past, leave a comment below. I would love to hear it. And next, watch this video on the new Vibrant Wellness Hormone Zoomer. This is one of the best tests for both the sex hormones and adrenal function.